everyone, I am Ms. Hu, your physics teacher. In this video, we are going to go through Winter 2023 Paper 4 Theory Extended Variant 1, Question 1. This question covers topics of energy, momentum, impulse, and force. So in this question, a girl holds a rubber ball out of a window of a tall building. The mass of the ball is 0.20 kilograms, and the ball is at rest at 10 meters above a concrete path. For A, we need to calculate the gravitational potential energy of the ball relative to the concrete path. So to answer this question, you must know the formula for gravitational potential energy. By now, of course, you should know. The gravitational potential energy formula is mgh, where m is mass. As you can see, mass is given over here. G, of course, is 9.8, as written at the front of the paper, which is over here, 9.8. And H is 10 meters. So, mass is 0 0.20, G is 9.8, and H is 10. This gives us a value of 19.6 joules. So when writing the answer, always remember to write the answer in the provided space here, and you can write your answer up to two or three significant figures. Now, can you write more? Actually, yes, you can, but it is preferred to keep the answer to two or three significant figures because it will be easier for the examiner to mark. So let's write here 19.6 joules. Now let's check against the answer in the mark scheme. So you can see from the mark scheme, the answer given is 20 joules. Now, if you have gotten the correct answer, you're of course going to get full marks. But if you didn't, then the examiner will have to check your answer against the mark scheme. So if you got the correct answer, you will get two marks straight away. But if you didn't get the correct final answer, then the examiner will have to check, did you write at least a formula out or did you write the working out? So in our case, we got the correct final answer, and when we say we get the correct final answer here, this includes the correct unit. So we got 19.6, we do have the formula, and we also have the correct substitution of values in our working. Now the preferred number of significant figures is actually 2, which is why you can see in a mark scheme the answer given here is 20 joules only. Now let's take a look at B. So in B, the girl releases the ball and it falls towards the path. The ball strikes the path and bounces vertically upwards. The figure shows the ball falling towards the path. They did give us the speed of the ball immediately before and after it strikes the path. 1. Calculate the kinetic energy of the ball immediately after it strikes the concrete path. So to solve this, we need to use the kinetic energy formula. Of course, you should also know that by now, the kinetic energy formula is half mv squared. Do we have the value of m? Yes, we do. They did tell us right at the beginning of the question that the mass of the ball is 0 0.20 kilograms. So we're going to substitute that into the formula. And for v, v is the speed at which the object is moving. So you need to take the value of the speed after it strikes a concrete path. That means a value of 12. This gives us a value of 14.4 joules. As I mentioned earlier, you can write your answer up to two or three significant figures. The number of preferred significant figures is actually two, which is why in a mark scheme it only writes 14. However, they will still accept up to three significant figures. So even if you wrote 14.4 joules, it will still be accepted. So checking the marking scheme, we do have 14 joules. And even if we had kind of messed that up, we would still get at least one mark because we do have the formula and we also had the correct substitution in our working. Now, although I've put two ticks here, actually it's only either or. You get one mark for the formula or the correct substitution. To get the two full marks, you have to get the correct final answer with the unit. Now let's look at number two. Show that the change in momentum of the ball when it bounces off the path is 5.2 kilograms meters per second. Now remember that for a show question, 
you cannot start with the number you're supposed to show. You have to start with the assumption that you don't know what the final answer is. You work it out and the final answer you get should be the answer that they require, which in this case is 5.2. The question is asking for the change in momentum, which is actually impulse. Now, even if you didn't know what impulse is, in fact, the term change in momentum is probably a lot easier for you to figure out how to solve this. Change in momentum here means you take the final momentum minus the initial momentum. If you can recall, momentum is mass times velocity. So we take mass times the final velocity minus the mass times the initial velocity. Now before we substitute the numbers into the calculation, let's just check on the speed. Based on the question, it says that the girl has dropped the ball. So the ball is actually falling towards the ground. And after it strikes the path, it changes direction. Now, remember that when it comes to vector quantities, we have to show the different directions by using the symbols of positive and negative. Momentum is a vector quantity, which is why we have to include positive and negative when it comes to the calculations. So that means when it comes to the speed of the ball, one has to be positive and one has to be negative. So in this case, let's say we take the speed of the ball after it strikes a path as positive and the speed of the ball before as negative. So when we do the substitution, this would be 0 0.20 times positive 12 minus 0 0.20 times negative 14. So you can see that because there's a negative negative, that double negative will become positive. So when you work this out, you should get 5.2 kilogram meters per second, exactly as what the question wants us to show. And that's how you prove this value. Now I have had students who have asked, what if we use the positive and negative for the opposite directions instead? That means they use positive for before it strikes and negative for after it strikes. So let's see what happens if we do that. That means in this case, we would get negative 12 and positive 14. So when you work this out, you'll end up getting negative 5.2, which is not what the question wants. If you accidentally did this, then you need to change the positive and negative to the other way so that you can get the correct answer. So let's just revert this back to our original working so that we can get the positive 5.2. Now let's look at 3. The question says that a ball is in contact with the path for 0 0.25 seconds. Calculate the average resultant force on the ball when it is in contact with the path. Now in this case, ideally, you should know the relationship between force and impulse, or in this case, force and change of momentum. The formula is force equals to change of momentum divided by time. Where do we get the change of momentum? It's actually given to us in a question just before. You should still be able to work out this answer anyway because the question has already told us that the change in momentum is 5.2. So we're going to substitute that 5.2 kg meters per second divided by 0 0.25 seconds. And that should give us 20.8 Newton, or round it to two significant figures, which is 21 Newton. I'm writing it as 20.8 because I actually like to write it up to three significant figures. So whenever it comes to calculation, remember that you get full marks when you have the correct value with the unit. If you didn't get it correctly, then only will the examiner look for marks based on your working. So as long as we have the correct formula or the correct substitution, we would get one mark. Now, what if you couldn't remember the relationship between force and change of momentum, but instead remembered the formula of F equals MA? You can actually still kind of work it out. Let me just show you. So let's say we have F equals MA. So I'm writing it here in a different color just to show you the alternative working. And we have mass of 0 0.20, which is from the earlier part of the question. And acceleration, we know, is actually V minus U over T. Do we have V and U 
Yes, we do. From the speed of the ball section over here. So we can substitute v as 12 and u as negative 14. So remember that acceleration is also a vector, so the positive and negatives apply. And you divide this by 0 0.25. So if you have the numbers substituted correctly in this equation, you would still get the same answer of 20.8 Newton, which is the correct answer for this question. And that's how you answer question one in this paper. Do check out my channel to find out how to solve more questions in past year papers.